I am so excited to be working with you, Karen Martini. You've had books, you've had restaurants, you've had cooking shows. <laughs> It's too much, really. <laughs> I'm a little bit intimidated, I must say. Oh, no, don't be intimidated, Rich. We're going to totally enjoy this journey together, exploring so many fabulous gluten-free, lactose-free and FODMAP recipes. It's about what you can eat and not about what you can't eat. And that's the fabulous thing about mm. this whole series of Intolerant Cooks. And those pesky vegans, what do you think of those? We love them. <laughs> but you know what, Rich? Today all starts with a pumpkin. By our surroundings, I'm not surprised. <laughs> wow. Look at those pumpkins. Hello, Mark. Hey, Karen. Karen. Richard. Richard, Mark, nice to meet you. Likewise. Welcome to my place. Oh, they are just so majestic. Like... Just gorgeous. Yes, yes. They're, Which um, variety are these? Yeah, I haven't seen them before. Yeah. They're, a, they're a native uh, French variety, Musc de Provence. Oh. So. Posh. Posh. Yes. Oh, well, the oh. patch is just down the road. Do you guys yeah. want to go and Come have on. a look? Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. So, Max, there's plenty of greenery and weeds. Your philosophy to farming is obviously pretty organic. Well, my philosophy with agriculture is if you want to do it, you've got to do something sustainably. Because, you know, I'd like to farm. If I ever get around to having kids, I'd like them to farm and, and their kids as well. So one of the big things is the quality of your product. Because consumers are really, really focusing in on where their food's coming from. How's had, it been grown? Yeah, how's it been grown? Is it sustainable? So, yeah, it's becoming more and more important. And, and the link between the consumer and the farmer has really tightened, in, in, yeah. even in the last five years. Mm. Well, I think we should just get one of your beautiful pumpkins and cook it, because Richard's got a fabulous salad. I'm going to do a very slow-roasted pumpkin and make a fresh ricotta salad. Oh, that sounds amazing. I can't wait. <laughs> Oh, Richard, have a look at this flesh of the Musk de Provence pumpkin. It's glorious. Now, I'm going to pop it down there. Now, Karen, if you want to reach down and get some harissa, and then if we sprinkle that on while it's warm, that will add another layer of heat. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. And I'm going to start on my fresh ricotta cheese. So it's one full litre of lactose-free milk. And then 250 mils of cream. OK, so when you traditionally make ricotta, we add something to then curdle or separate the curds from the whey. What do you choose? Look, I have made it with apple cider vinegar, but I think that can sometimes create a firmer curd. So I'm just going to use straight lemon juice. Ah, that's the good old-fashioned way, yeah. yeah. Right. So while you're doing that, Rich, can I do something with this silver beet? Yep. You can chop that out and then basically just finely slice. So what temperature do you heat the milk and the cream up to? Is it just... It's where it gets that really sleepy, hollow little steam action going. So you can see... Because there's not a temperature. It's about the look. <laughs> it's about the and look. And it's like it's past lukewarm, though. It's part, yeah, it yeah. begins to like it begins to have a layer of steam about it. And you can see that there's just little fine bubbles starting to appear. This is where we turn off our heat. Give it a little stir. Can I'll add the lemon juice? Yeah. This is where the curds separate from the whey and you end up with fresh ricotta. Let it sit for about four minutes until those curds are quite firm. Yeah. So while that's happening, what have we got here, Rich? Now, I've sprouted our sunflower seeds today. They're so nutritious. So and, these have taken... And delicious. And delicious. So a couple of handfuls in with yeah, the salad. They took me about three, four days to get to this point. Look, we've also got some herbs here, Rich. I've got some dill. Mm -hmm. And I think you've got parsley and we picked some of that fresh tarragon mm. from Mark's garden, which wasn't in your recipe, <laughs> but I really think it should There's, go in. Well, we also got our pomegranate, which is not really in the recipe Do you want to crack either? it open and see if it's ripe? Okay. It's really hard to tell if pomegranates are ripe when they're on the tree, I have found. Oh. Oh, look at that. That is just gorgeous. Okay, Karen, I think this is ready to pour. Do you need a hand? Yep. <laughs> okay. Mm. 
Look at all those curds. That's really surprising. Who mm. ever thought it was lactose free? All right, so we've done that. I'm going to toast my pepita seeds now. So when you're making a salad like this, I think you've also got to not only think about the flavours, but you're looking for texture as well. And the pepitas are going to add a lovely crunch to the salad. Yeah. Do you ever pull the yeah, we this probably... a bit like this? I can show you. This yeah. is what we do in the restaurant. And you just squeeze the curd a little gently. So the longer you leave it, the firmer the ricotta is going to be. Mm. So what are we after for this? I salad? want it still to be soft. Okay. Well Not. Then. That's going to be Not done. Not spreadable, but just in, forming shape for the salad. In no time at all, mm. I think. Richard, I'm just going to dress the salad with the cobram garlic oil. And wow, it just smells so gorgeously toasty. Like the garlic is roasted. Yeah. It's amazing. It's, there's no sharpness in this oil. No. Okay. Okay. A bit of a drizzle and a splash of lemon juice. I've added the salt and pepper. And I think we're ready. Do we I have a platter pretty, somewhere? Yeah, I'm going to use this. Rich, pumpkin down first and just like arrange it on the bottom. Yeah. And I think showing off this Musk de Provence Always. pumpkin is what we need to do. In this and the beautiful, salad. the beautiful rind. I've left the skin on mm. on purpose. One, because I think it, it holds the pumpkin in place when you roast it. And two, I actually love the flavour of the skin and the mm. texture, the chewiness that's added to the salad. Okay, so I was thinking, but it's your salad. All right. We're I doing would, it together. You do that, I'll do this. Yes. Maybe just over the top like this. Yep. Okay, let's do a ricotta reveal. Oh, see that? It's just so beautiful. It's great just as it is, it is. for breakfast, for uh, um, people to share, like an antipasti type situation. Antipasti. Antipasti. Anti <laughs> <laughs> have you got an antipasti? No, I don't have an antipasti. I have no. a, a Zia Maria. <laughs> so ricotta over the top. Yeah. Well, the contrast of the ricotta against that deep green and the pumpkin is so beautiful. What about the pomegranates on top? Yeah. Now, this may not be FODMAP, but we only used this because we found it growing in Mark's garden. And we couldn't help ourselves, and <laughs> Richard stole it. <laughs> I Sorry, Mark. It. Sorry. <laughs> but a great way to get the pomegranate seeds out of the pomegranate without um, ending up with pith yep. is to just spank it. Spank it. Look at that. Oh, well, that's great. Okay, okay, that's enough. That's enough. I'm going to put my pepitas on. Like so. I'm running out of patience to actually taste this salad yet. So there we have our roast pumpkin salad with fresh made ricotta. It's a complete celebration of Mark's fabulous farm. Mm, delicious. Mm. Rich, tell me about this curry that you use Coles Tasmanian salmon in. It's a fresh pandan, heirloom tomatoes and salmon curry. It's a bit on the light oh. side, so a bit southern Indian, maybe okay. Sri Lankan, that sort of... Oh, let's get into it. It's a lot it. lighter. OK, let's go. Can I get the coconut oil? That'll be this. That'll be that. It's so warm, it's all melting. Right. There we go. So a little bit of coconut oil, because I like the two flavours together. This is fresh pandanus leaf. So I just chop it roughly so you can actually, big enough so you can actually flavour it and then get it out later. So it's really, really, like it's lightly cooked. And obviously with fish you don't need to cook it that long. These tomatoes are juicy flesh. They will only, the big thing about this was we'll only need to melt it. Right. Yeah, these are done. So do you want to take that in? Yeah. Awesome. There we go. So, Richard, tell me a little bit about your intolerances and how you got to where you are today. Look, it was about seven years ago. I never wanted to really find out exactly what was going on. You didn't? I, no, well, I loved food so much. It you... My food didn't love me so much. Do you think there are a lot of people out there that are going through what you're going through or have been through? Yeah, they will do what I did for a long time, which is just they know that certain things don't make them feel that fantastic, but they're actually willing to eat them and suffer the consequences. Suffer in silence. Yeah. Richard, how would you like the salmon prepared? We've got about 600 grams here, mm -hmm. so four fillets. Cook with skin on. Yep. I do. Some people don't like it, but I find that all the oils and everything else is in there, and it's if you eat the whole food, I'm sort of into that. 
Yeah. And stuff Look, like I've that. got a little tip on a, the way around that because yeah. quite often I find that if you cut it into larger chunks yeah. and sear it just skin side down mm -hmm. and then drop it into the curry and you end up with this gorgeous toasty skin. I've got... All right, okay, let's do it. And instead of dicing it really small, we'll put it into manageable pieces. Yeah. This is going to be the best two way street because not only Karen's actually going to give so much insight to you and to me on how to cook, but her coming up against the parameters of mm. cooking for the intolerant person is going to open her eyes and make you learn about different practices and different foods that you didn't knew about before. Well, I do love pushing the boundaries and it is going to challenge me on different levels, mm. but I'm pretty confident that we're going to succeed in many different ways yeah. and surprise each other mm. from side to side. I totally, I totally agree. Do you have any salt, Andy? Yep. Yeah. yeah, a little bit of salt on the skin and I would actually oil the fish itself instead of throwing oil into the yeah. pan. Okay. So then you're just dropping the fish skin side down into the pan. Like we'll a little bit like that. Yep. So, Rich, this is like what we do in the restaurant. I always crisp fish up like this, whether it's going into, you know, a seafood pasta or a frutta okay. de mare, um, big seafood broth. So just skin side down, mm. Rich. Beautiful. So we've had our tomatoes and our pan down and our garlic. Yeah. Cooking for a while. Now I'm going to add some shredded coconut. Get it in there. Get it in there. Because I am wary of overcooking the fish in the pan. We are just trying to sear the skin. Mm -hmm. So Back on. can I have that? That's that's so it. That's pretty good. Let's put the fish in. So when I'm cooking a curry like this, we're not trying to overcook the fish. We want to identify the fish in the curry yeah. and showcase. Don't you love that word showcase? I would never have used the that. Coals. <laughs> Tasmanian salmon. We want to showcase it in this curry. All right. Okay. You've got three minutes to make your sambal. Buddy. All right, okay. I'm going to cook a very quick sambal. So I'm going to use fresh coconut. I'm going to use some chilli. That's a lot of chilli. But it's a sambal, so you no, don't... No, I get it, you know, I get it. You get it? I like chilli. Yeah. Sorry, do you want a rough chop or a small chop? Yeah, rough chop. And I'm going to just, it's just got, it's just thrown on at the end, a bit like a gremolata or something like that. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I'm with you so, now. Yeah, great. Hey, Rich, that looks lovely and toasty. Okay. You've really toasted the yeah. coconut up with chilli. And okay, I throw, can smell that that's hot. Throw in your coriander. Okay, it's going to wilt in there. That's in fine. The pan. Yeah, I reckon it's cool. And then lime juice. That'll cool it down a bit. Okay. I'm just going to pour it off. There we are. Okay. So, Rich, we're ready to go, I, I think. I think so. And how would you like to serve this curry up? Okay, well, look, I've done a simply cooked rice with a chicken stock and a little bit of coconut water, and that's it. Rich, a great way to serve it up, especially to showcase the curry, is maybe just press the rice into mm -hmm. a little dish like this. You know, you don't have to find a pile on, but yeah. I kind of like colour and the landscape of your curry yeah. against that, it would be really, right. really... I'm going to squeeze a little bit of lime in, just go. to add a little bit of sharpness. And probably one more, I would say. I'm reading you like a book. Great. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. How are we looking? Pretty good. I do like the look of the shredded coconut mm. through your sauce. Right. Superb. See? And you can see that the seared skin mm. looks a lot more appetising. I think sometimes if you throw it in at the last minute, it can lick a little lacklustre. Yeah. So. So this is our little fried sambal. So just don't, you don't need a lot of this because no, it's a bit of kick. Me. <laughs> you don't need a lot of this. Try, but it's nice though. It is lovely. Yeah. Lovely, yeah, the hot there stuff. We go. Beautiful. And for a little bit more bling, coriander. And there we have it. Our fish curry with pandan and heirloom tomatoes. Mmm. Mm. Delicious. Mm. Definitely been a day of eating. I think we mm. need a little stroll. What do you think? Let's go. We should explore Mark's property. OK. Let's go. All right. Oh, it's just so picturesque. I mean, look at that. Beautiful. Broken River running through Mark's property. He is the luckiest man. <laughs> We're pretty lucky to be here too. <laughs>
You know, Rich, it's all well and good, us walking around Mark's farm having a look, but I'm always sort of checking out, making sure that that's not a snake. It's not a snake. It's not a snake. It was a stick. But I am keeping my eyes out. Hi, Margie. <laughs> well, I'm in love, Richard, with you and Mark's property. Like, it was just so drop-dead picturesque, wasn't it? It's beautiful around here. It really is. Almost as beautiful as these sovereign lamb chops that I'm doing. Uh, and what are you going to put with them? Well, I'm putting it with a little dish that I came across when I was um, last in Spain. And it was served in the Boccaria. Uh, I had it in the morning. And it was chickpeas with mushrooms and a red wine vinaigrette. OK. Sounds a little complicated, but it's not. It's sort of a, a strange combination, if you like. But trust me, it is delicious. So we'll start off by grilling some of these mushrooms. This is hot. I've also got a pot on here with some water in it. I've got some tinned chickpeas, so they're going straight in the pot. Rich, I'd like you to start making a vinaigrette. I want one little clove of garlic. A little clove? I'm do you want gonna... this, like, how do you want this done? Just grated, I think, on the microplane. Okay. In the meantime, I've got some of these local mushrooms grown around here. Yeah. I'm just putting some salt and pepper on them and a little bit of oil, and we're going to grill them. All right, so here's garlic. Fabulous, in there. In here. Next, Rich, in with some Dijon mustard. Okay. A couple of teaspoons and two chilies, just finely chopped, seeds mm. and all. Okay. Chickpeas mm. are simmering. That's all we really need all to right. do. And I'm just going to pour these off. Put the pot back on, because I'm going to grab some of Mark's Malbec wine. No, I haven't tasted this yet. But no, obviously, like it's an Argentina. They do grow a lot in Argentina. Well, the idea is I'm going to put around 300 mils or so into this pot. And I'm going to reduce it right down. Now, these mushrooms, they're getting away from me. Definitely char grilled. OK, Rich, how are you going with my vinaigrette over here? Um, slowly. Chilli in yep. there. All of it? Yep. Seeds and all? Uh, yep. I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah, half, half. Half, yep. There we are. Yep. And if you could pour on some vinegar. Yep, oh, lovely. Really. Okay, salt in that as well. And then oil. Oh. Yeah. Okay, that's quite a bit. That if you is could give that a bit of a stir for me. Yep. Let's throw these hot chickpeas. That's pretty good. Into the vinaigrette. Yeah. So, what will happen, because we've heated the chickpeas up, they will now take on the flavour of the dressing. Mm -hmm. And that's the wine done, Richard. So it's reduced right down it's and we've almost been... like a syrup or something. It's yeah, that's exactly what we're after, this sort of reduced intense wine flavour. Rich, would you be able to puree some of these mushrooms? Mm -hmm. So I'll put those ones in. Yeah. You blitz those. And then throw them in on the chickpeas. All right. Hey Rich. Yeah. I'm just slicing the other mushrooms up. So again, we get that different texture. We've got pureed mushrooms and the slices of mushrooms through I the chickpeas. I reckon that looks about right. Oh, you're done. Yeah. I'm done. And okay. Do you want a spatula or a spoon? Done. And it almost makes a sauce. Like, it's really, when you cook mushrooms like this, they're, they're almost meaty, aren't they? Mm. Like, they intensify. Now, let's get on to cooking the lamb. I'm going to put these straight on the grill. Yeah. Right. We're almost there. Yeah. So we've got our pureed mushrooms, our sliced mushrooms and our marinating chickpeas. So I'll give it a bit of a stir. Wow. That Malbec right. is just out there. Um, you want to, uh, yep. Yep. Yeah. Right. Those chops only need another minute. I'm going to pop some of the salad into the bowl. OK, Richard, I've got this. Yeah. Do you want to just check those chops? Oh, I think they're ready. OK. Give them a bit of a poke with your finger. Should okay. be a little spongy. Yep. All right, I'll do them off. Out, out. Oh. Wow. They look great. Do we, now, do we rest these? I'm going to rest them 
on mm -hmm. top of yeah. that because okay. I think the juices are just going to enhance the dish. But I think we'll just drop them on a bit higgledy piggledy. Last two chops on. Oh, guys, lamb oh. cutlets, <laughs> my favourite. How did you know? Talk about impeccable timing. <laughs> I, I even bought my wine glass because I reckon this would go perfectly with my rewind Malbec. Oh, yes, definitely. A splash. Please do the honours. Yes. Been waiting for this all day. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. Richard. Awesome. <laughs> well, there you have it, guys. It's my seared sovereign lamb with red wine, mushroom, and chickpea salad. I'll tell you what, Mark, I'm going to give you the recipe, but for everyone else, head to intolerantcooks.com.au where you can find this recipe and everything else we cook on the series. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. No worries, I hope you guys really enjoyed it here. That's lovely.